All right, so recording's going, everyone. Good morning. It's great to have you all with us again. Thanks for joining us. We're looking at areas by integration this morning, and the way I want to begin, uh, being that this is an area we've had a look at in the past, but we're going to go into further depth today. What I want to do is uh, call your mind back to a previous lesson when we were looking at the fundamental theorem of calculus, what were we trying to get across to you? Like my big mission during that lesson was to help you understand that this process of differentiation, which we know about, and it's reverse, which we first introduce as anti-differentiation, then we get a new name, integration. It gives you area, but it doesn't do it by magic. It does it because of the way that a function, a primitive, is related to its derivative. And there's something really key and visual at the base, at the foundation of calculus, which, which leads to this result, right? So I want you to remember that, that integration is something we connected very closely to area, and it kind of felt like this, right? If you want to start your notes for today. Um, the derivative, right? What did it give you? It was going to give you a, uh, a rate of change. And what that looked like geometrically, that's a really messy word, but I think you get what I'm talking about. A rate of change geometrically is a gradient. You know, the steeper it is, the faster that it's changing, the shallower it is, the slower it's changing. Um, if there's a gradient of zero, if it's flat, it's not changing at all. And of course, if your gradient is negative, that means your rate of change is also negative. So whatever it is that you had is getting lower and lower, smaller and smaller, and all the rest. Now, an integral, by contrast, is not about a rate of change. I wonder if anyone remembers, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of giving away the fact because I have my old notes from um, the last lesson there. A rate of change is the derivative, but the total change is the integral, right? Now, what does that look like visually? This was us trying to connect it to area. Now, this idea that integration and area, thank you Hamza, are connected is the real key, but what I'm now going to try and push on this lesson is the fact that uh, these two things, integral and area, whilst being connected, are not exactly the same. There is, there's some subtle distinctions to be made between them. So in order to try and tease out what those things are, um, we're going to do a series of area questions that will require us to use integration to really nut out what the, uh, what the values are, what the answers are. But as we go through them, um, I want to make sure that we have a logical sort of setup for how to actually do all these questions. So I've got kind of like a three-step guide for you here, okay? Um, I'm pretty bad at making up acronyms, but this one I think hopefully will stick in your brain. For area questions, there's always three steps. Yeah, I, I thought you might appreciate that, Jason. I wasn't going to say it myself, but now that you said it, I feel like it gives me permission. For area questions, you want it to be sick, okay? Step one. S, step two, I, step three, C. S stands for sketch, two stands, or I rather, stands for identify your integrals, and C then stands for combining those integrals and bringing together a conclusion. So sketch, identify your integrals, then combine and conclude. And it's worth noting, this three-step sort of guide here, if you like, it, it generally applies to every area question that you're going to encounter. But sometimes, depending on the question, you won't have to, for example, do the sketch. They might provide you a drawing from the outset. Or depending on the kind of area that you have to evaluate, there might not be any combining you need to do. You just have to conclude. You'll see it all makes sense once I give you some concrete examples. So for area questions, I want it to be sick. We're going to sketch, identify, and combine, and conclude. So let's have a look at this first example to see how it all fits together. The question says, find the area of the region bounded by y equals 3x minus x squared and the x axis. So no picture has been provided. So the first step in our, uh, I'm going to write it up on the top right hand corner here, s, i, c. Our first step is, we're going to sketch this thing. Now, the, the question is not to draw, so you don't have to worry about making this you know, beautiful and precise, but you still do have to have it accurate enough that you can draw some conclusions from it. So having a look at this function up here, maybe you don't have an immediate image in your mind of what this thing looks like, but you can help, hopefully tell me in the comments what's the general shape of what we're going to get here. Help me out, what kind of uh, graph am I going to draw, roughly speaking? Yes, thumbs up, well done. 
Uh, fantastic, everyone's identifying the correct shape. So we're gonna get a parabola here. And then the question is, well, what kind of parabola? Now, yes, very good, Yvonne, it's upside down. The way you can tell it's upside down is that the coefficient of x squared, which is the part that is important, it's negative. Um, let's try and get a little more detail on this, right? I'm going to factorize this. That will make it easier to identify the features. So the common factor is an x. And then what that leaves me with in the brackets is a three takeaway x, right? So I'm factorized, I'm done. What does that tell us? Well, factorization, once you've got your two factors, they tell you, well, what do they tell you? The factors, what kind of information can I get from the factors? Anyone wanna go ahead and write it in the chat? What kind of information am I looking for from each individual factor? Yes, the intercepts, perfect. X intercepts, even better, Abby, that's great detail. So let me go in further detail on that. From the X factor, see what I did there? Um, you're gonna get an X intercept of X equals zero, and you're going to get a nice chiming in there, Sarang, well done, what, what they said. Um, from the three minus X factor, you're gonna get X equals three as your X intercept, okay, yeah. So. I'm gonna to start to put all of this on a very, very rough um, set of axes. And again, it doesn't have to be beautiful. You don't need 100% of the information that you would normally um, have to provide if the question said, hey, graph this. Um, you'll see the parts that are relevant for us. So here's my very rough and messy coordinate uh, set of axes here. I know I'm gonna have an x-intercept at zero. I'm gonna have an x-intercept at three. And then as I think it was Yvonne said right up the top, we're gonna to have this negative uh, facing down, concave down parabola. Okay, so this is the shape that we've got. This is y equals three x minus x squared. Now, even though it's not beautiful or intricate and I'm missing lots of other information like where's that vertex and that kind of thing, I actually have all the information I need. Go back to the question and see. It says find the area of the region bounded by that curve, the blue one, and the x-axis. So there's kind of like this fenced in area that we're looking at there and hopefully you can see it right there in the middle. This is the one we're after in here, which I'm shading in green. Okay, so if this is the area that I'm now trying to evaluate, I've done step one, S for sketch. Now I need to identify the integral that tells me the size of that area. I'm getting the area under a curve, so I'm gonna say area, uh, yeah, I'll leave it as blue, that's fine, is an integral, and because I'm looking for an area, I need a definite integral here, right? So I need some boundaries. I need a lower boundary, where do I start? And I need an upper boundary where I end. Anyone wanna jump in on the comments and tell me what my boundary should be, lower and then upper? Ah, oh, well done, Sasha. Even with lag, that's like instant, fantastic work. Now, Perrin is right, it is three and zero, but be careful. Um, if you think all the way back, Mrs. Lee taught us a lesson on the properties of a definite integral. So even though Perrin, I'm sure you didn't mean for one to be one and one the other, um, the order does matter in our, in, in our um, uh, boundaries are integral here. If I integrated from three to zero, you'd get exactly the negative of going from zero to three. So let Mariam says, we'll go, go lower is zero and the higher one is three. We usually say upper. Okay, so <clears throat> there's my boundaries. The thing that I'm integrating is three X take away X squared. And then I go with respect to X. So this is the integral that I need. Let me move this guy a little over here so I have some more space to work. Okay, now at this point here, you might say, okay, I'm, I know how to do this, I'm pretty good with it, right? Um, integrals increase indices, so this is gonna become, in our square brackets here, 3x squared, and then we divide by our new power, and then we subtract, and then I'm gonna increase indices one more time, x cubed on three. Close bracket, there's my prudent function. I'm integrating from naught to three. So. I've got uh, something now to put values into. I'm just gonna do the straight substitution without any simplification. So I get three times three squared on two, take away three cubed on three. Does that look like I got my upper bound? Okay, and then I'm gonna subtract and this becomes zero take away zero. Okay, it's a bit of a messy bracket there. All right, so have a look. Um, Thumbs up, did you get that? Was that looking all right to you? Let me get some confirmation that you guys have substituted correctly, that I've substituted correctly. Thank you, Mary, Sasha, much appreciated. Okay, now I've done my straight substitution. Perfect, Lawrence. Let's actually start to simplify this thing. So three times three squared is 27 over two, and then I've got 27 over three, take away zero. Uh, 
I've got a factor, I guess, of 27 out there, a half take away a third. And I happen to know if you check your common denominators there, a half take away a third is a sixth because it's three sixths take away two sixths. Sixth is really hard to say. Um, so I've got 27 divided by six, and I can simplify that one more time um, because it's a common factor of three on the top and the bottom. So that gives me nine over two uh, or four and a half, okay? Now, what have I done so far? Well, I sketched, that's what you can see over here on the right hand side. I identified my integral and then I went ahead and calculated what my integral was. Now I'm ready to do the last step, which is to combine and then conclude. Um, now, in this case, there's not much to combine. You'll see later on, sometimes we will get more than one integral that we need to put together in some careful way. In this case, there was just the one integral, so I'm gonna skip the combined bit, but I'm gonna conclude and I'm gonna encourage you, it's slightly nitpicky and pedantic, but rather than just saying, ooh, this is an area, I'm just gonna put units squared on the end, right? I, I generally try and avoid that as much as possible. Like, can you get away with it? Probably, um, but the technically accurate way is that that integral you started with had no units attached to it. And depending on what this question was, you know, if we think back to um, over here, you know, this integral here, it's not about uh, you know units squared, it's about cases per day, right? Um, it would be a number of cases. So your units actually should be careful with. So rather than just uh, doing an integral and then saying, whoops, it's an area, so therefore I should um, put units squared on the end, a conclusion is better. I would say, therefore, the area is, uh, this is nine over two, so nine over two units squared, full stop. So like I said, that's kind of the most technically accurate way to say it, you probably could just get away with it by tacking unit squared on the end, but I'm trying to set you a good example here, so this is the best way to do it. We sketched, we identified the integral, and then we combined and concluded. All right, 